Yeah, you know when it's here, isn't it? Falls on us. Did we ever get August? Holy smokes, folks. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think we got 20 degrees this year, what we're supposed to get. Blew right past the season of August, right into fall. And I hear the crickets hesitating. Whether you're drowning or whether you're just being crickets, it won't matter. You got to do something. I know you all hate that. We all hate doing something. Being forced to it. Good procrastinators. It's not going to help us. We have to come up with our own plan. In fact, before I go off too far, listening to a discussion on UCY TV, Larkin Rose with uh, James Corbett. Driving me nuts, folks. You can't define the world that you think you see and then give in to it by claiming you're going to run from it. You're going to have to figure out a new way at it. That war is on you, whether you see it or not. So we come here every, every week, the best as I can. I to inform you how. <laughs> really simple, folks. Just to, just where you, wherever you have a, a, a thing you want to fix, we can, we can kind of start working back at, at doing it. It's up to you. So they don't do it to you. And we have at least a say. And I just, I wish I had more, I wish I could talk to you more about what's really going on with what I tell you we do during the week and how far that goes that you can, you can influence and you can interfere with current agendas by not, not having to engage the normal construct. In fact, you look at the you design, you look at the system that you have, and you find the weaknesses. And I tell you about that all the time. But you're not going to do it from the keyboard and just looking and finding and researching the internet, and, and, and seeing YouTube's and, and figure this out. And, and so you see, see other what other people are doing for good or bad. Maybe I'm going to get to a discussion on jurisdiction here to show you how not to do it, so you don't get beat down so bad. Anyway, so. Um, you, you gotta just you have to jump in and you have to start working with the information you have and then apply it. So I might even be wrong to tell you you just have to you know it's just your action. No, you have to work with the information you get, the knowledge you think you have, and then learn what to apply and then apply it. So there's actually an interim step there. And very few people really want to do it. In fact, very few people want to even help jump in when an, a, an idea, and exposure is on point. They'd rather go to what I call the minutia, the things that at least I can see in the world have already have an answer. We are, I can already tell you what the outcome is going to be. And unless you're going to be the one that exposes the new angle on that to get at the problem that they want, the, the systems that be, the, the people that are in the control, you get at the thing that they can't protect against, unless you're that guy or gal. Don't waste your time on it. And I've told you quite a few things that I just look at it. Yeah, it happened. But what are we going to really do about that? We better work from the lesson we learned from it. What it tells us is underlying this whole thing. And then we get these, the system comes out to tell you, to give your mind a little thing to hook onto, which really not, it isn't in, it isn't even that either. You know, like the term deep state. You blow right past the fact that this thing is a systemic organized criminal syndicate. It's not just the deep state. It's not this thing you put in your mind, this boogeyman that controls everything. It's systemic, folks. It's everywhere. And so this is, uh, for those of you in Aftercast, anywhere you find this broadcast later, for whomever will rebroadcast it or republicize it, this is BTWRLM337, and that should get you the content. When I usually go through here, you can go back and pick up what I found. You can read it for what you, I'll usually just do the headlines. A couple, I'll read a couple things today, but just the headlines, just to show you that they're giving us the notice, and then usually what I can, my take on that, and how you can address it if that's what an interest of yours. And then not necessarily in isolation. A lot of the things are, are are integrated across the board are action against you. But and also, I'd like to thank those of you that are simulcasting the broadcast or even post after. You know, ucy.tv, I believe we're still there, Pl plugging away. Thank you, Jules, and uh, Sound Minds. Uh, I understand you went p private. I don't know why that is. I don't. I can't look at all that now. So, at any rate, for those of you on YouTube, you can get in, into Sound Minds, and they got normalization of ignorance. Thank you for posting the things to periodically. I appreciate your your help. And I just found out by accident again. I I, I did. I start. I searched my own stuff out. What I, I know, I talked about things. I don't know when. 
and I search my myself out, uh, my own stuff up, just to see when did I say something relative to a current thing going on, and maybe what I said. And I uh, found out that just in case, just in case, thank you. I just noticed you were posting again over there at d-program.org for lots of other things. So I appreciate all the, the help, and thank you, Grammy Mary, for your Spreaker donations every every month that give us the ability to get out to more people. And behind the scenes, it's more people, and then administratively the the files get to send out a little bit easier too. Otherwise, I've got even more work. If you don't understand, after the broadcast, it's not over for me. I'm still doing post-production, whether that's adjusting the file that has a problem or problems in the audio because of the digital whatever, and then posting up on all the sites that we have to get the word out. Why? Because, as I told you, they're making it difficult to get the word out. And so we have to just get in and, and do what it takes. And I don't do everywhere. I don't do Facebook. I don't do lots of places. So those of you that do that, you can help spread the word there. And anyway, so that's us, what, us helping ourselves, I would hope, uh, I would say, uh, I would say in hope of the fact that I do bring information that you can tangibly use. It's not just ideas. A lot of people, I mean, I have people that are detractors of that. They, I don't, I don't get into that. Well, then that means you're not really going to be functioning. Uh, getting back, it, it, uh, I knew I was going to start doing this. I better not. The conversation between uh, Corbett and, uh, and Rose, uh, just if you get into one mindset, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to walk, walk, walk yourself off the cliff, and by and you're going to do it. But could you put yourself on a slippery slope of a wrong, a wrong imp- imposition? But you're going to sound real intelligent. And I, I, if I hadn't been doing here what I'm doing here in the last few years, to know you can do things notwithstanding the system you see that occupies you, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. And so I don't, I can't really get into it. I just need to know if you get into it, you'll start to see what I'm saying. And part of this problem is if you get too specific, the other side knows what you're doing. They can counter, they can cover up, they can turtle up, they can look, make it look different. They're, they're masters at camouflage, folks. You don't, and the chameleon, you don't understand, I guess, this. What you see up front gets changed as you start attacking it, or even if they find out you're attacking them. You have to come a whole different way. So, anyway, but as I was speaking last week and trying to explain certain things to those of you that will step up and do something, uh, and before I go on, those of you that have sent me emails, I'm not getting to you about right now. We've got a bunch of stuff going on trying to juggle things, and I just can't get to those uh, emails quite yet. Uh, that um, don't, don't despair if you are expecting uh, some answers. I just There's just so many, like I told you, this is the gin, folks. It's so many stupid things going on. It just didn't quite mesh up that you got to go fit the puzzle pieces in better and connect up to stuff and finding out, well, like part of this is the digital the digital age and hacking. i got to deal with a lot of these things behind the scenes. It takes a lot of time to keep going. But anyway, so those of you who don't, don't despair, I'll, I'll eventually get to you if you send me something. Uh, but uh, anyway, going back to what I was telling you last week, uh, right after, it's pretty amazing. If I don't, if I can't get to some of this news, I, I lose the advantage of telling you the day before something comes out to tell you that essentially what I just told you had to happen. Uh, the day, I think it was the day after, I said to you, I talked to you last week about the cannabis uh, testing, the portable HTHC tester, and I told you be careful on, or you can jump in and stop this right now for those of you that, that are. Well, in any capacity, utilizing it and getting on the highway, and they're going to—they're trying to set it up so they have one more hook in you. And I told you, jump in now, while it, and don't let them make that hook. Well, not even—I don't think it was the next day. The report came out it says new research finds no link between cannabis use and increased risk of traffic accidents. So on the first, just on the cover of that, the title tells you this is a piece of evidence for those of you that want to use this or get you find yourself involved, even an innocent party, a guy or gal with the that you want to use these uh, fraudulent testing, uh, drug testing, that you uh, have a right to challenge that up front before a lot of you have to plea. But uh, at any rate, and in the consequence of the after the plea, uh, that here it is, uh, just what I told you, there's no link between cannabis use and increased risk. The same question that was in the article last week, the attorney was telling you that that was the case, and I said, follow that track. I said, but be very careful that you're going to have to have some qualifiers about that. And so this, upon that heading, you would think, oh, there's no link. Well, be careful. The study was a meta study on other studies and exposes the failure of other studies. Now, this is important for all you all that want to go after anything that an agency of government uses as science, best science, and/or the 
whatever the, the authority that they use. Look at the failures of this meta that they identified in the meta study of other studies that say that they the, the that they've been used in the past that cannabis does affect, and you find little clues on how you address how the prior studies that are being relied on by someone that supposedly has the burden of proof to show you guilty cannot use those and those and through the rules of evidence and through the actions administrative actions if you go that way they are deciding either evidence that shouldn't be before them or it's arbitrary and capricious evidence because there's actually no standard well you get it in this in this following study you'll get the, the link later about how that works but i also told you that you're going to have to answer to a couple things that is in this in the report when you go read the report it's like it's the last sentence i think or close to it in the report that they send you to and uh, so my response is to that and i wanted to i put out a twitter that says this story confirms and amplifies what i stated here on rlm radio last week this study and that challenge need to be present present with anyone at the first point of contact with authorita remembering to remain silent now i want to interject on my own statement here about that remaining silent to what those things that incriminate you, those things that they're going to be looking to attach to you by your own statements. And I'll go on to read, to, to remembering to remain silent because, and here's a quote out of, the, out of the article, it doesn't say that it doesn't affect. It says it can't be used because these studies, these meta-studies, and looking at the, this meta-study, looking at other studies, the, there's conflicting information and they're confounding. And so they can't be relied upon. But they also say, in the, in the, um, even in the, the you know, abstract, that it's not over because the results should be corroborated by either objective data, quote, close quote, or another quote, or a clinical assessment of impairment. That's exactly what I told you last week to be careful. You're going to have to be silent and not allow them to make evidence about this because that's what, how they're going to tie this thing together. That applies everywhere, that little objective uh, data thing. That's, they have to develop more probable cause. And so this was an interesting uh, quick return, literally a day or days after I made the comment last week, on how you will take these, uh, this testing unit and you'll, do, you'll, you'll work to destroy it. Otherwise, they'll use it as a hook against you. This same method is what you do and apply to, to other subject matter areas. And so, again... When I'm reading the, the, the notice, what you call the news, and all the stories that pass, I'm looking for the clues as to how we actually run through this place, They're taking a very narrow path, and don't getting off in all our opinions, and don't thinking we know so much, but know plenty on what we ought to be enjoying in this place that is wanting to be stolen from us. If they didn't have this they had absolute power, they wouldn't have to look for the extending objective of data. Now remember, this also, if you understood and listened to me for a long time, those of you that read, read product data sheets or even heard, talk, listened about HIV, this clinical assessment of impairment, remember, that's in the data, in the medical pharmacology, they only need to make a clinical assessment. And so that's the, where they're going to, the system's going to make a definition on what that might be. And you've got to stop that. And so, or tie it back to make sure that it was arbitrary and capricious and then you kick it out again. So you have to have a better thought on how you approach this. These people are working to this study did not kill the idea that you could be impaired. It just says, well, you can't just use these studies and this idea that you have to do it. You're going to have to literally, it's redirecting us if we change the words. Objective data is really probable cause in the criminal side. Clinical assessment, that could be civil side as well. And I always find interesting they hit both sides. I mean, if so, if you know what you're reading for, if you look between, when they say reading between the lines, I'm really learning what that is. You look that they use language in a way that it's like a decoder ring, if I've told you before. You look to what they're saying, but you apply it to a, a, a necessity that this authorita, what you say is government imposing upon you, this thing that's not supposed to be there doing it that does, you ha that, they're still using the rules. Believe me, they're using the rules. And it's you not, not stepping up to force them to maintain that in, in any rate. So this was pretty interesting. I always kind of smile a little bit, say, okay, here it is. And I, like I said, it confirms and amplifies what I told you last week. You need to kind of see how this works. You need to see that they're not giving up. You need to see the science isn't settled at all. In fact, it's more thrown up, but that's what they're looking for. They're going to be now determining what objective data is required. 
And remember, very importantly in this story, they'll tell you again, you can't apply alcohol-related uh, impacts by uh, THC. And I'm not saying this all just to say let you go out and uh, you think you can go around and think you can argue uh, while being uh, interfered with by a drug. Don't do that. I mean, that should just be common sense. Because this is the to push back where everyone says they have no no power. The government's a, a thug. Yeah, that's a thug, but that's, you're letting a lot of times you're you're letting it, and you don't make a record to to expose that. And this is what I really only talk about a lot. You've heard it. You've heard me read court cases. The, the record is all important, and it depends on you look in a particular subject matter or particular jurisdiction of authority that purports to be that lawful authority and you have to, it's your duty when they come after you or before, I, and I'm saying this on the, on the THC, do this before those of you that will get brought up in this you can do this, you can be part of the part of the solution to kill this as well and set the standard that they can't this is more important, why? because we just remove one more hook that the occupier believes and presumes it has to put on you and the presumption is the problem uh, to begin with and people don't understand that I don't think and people take these uh, organized official things, sounding things, take a, a presumption, an arrogant position of authority. In, in, in case, the, if you had, I mean, this is what the, you know, IPCC and the climate change and sustainable development crowd does. They just, and this is alternative dispute resolution as well. They offer you two alternatives that are no good, and then uh, that's the only choice. And I've been telling you, you have to bring the third alternative. And then, then I'll just add this part for us. Then you have to have a plan on what you do when that when that third alternative is forced in or allo- is allowed in on your on your own instigation, and you run through that, and you keep hands off. You just make sure no one can touch you. That's the narrow path. If they're criminals, you stay inside the law. They can't touch you. As soon as they do, you out them as a criminal. Whether that uh, whether or not that means you can tell them in their face or whatever, or we want to do it by writing, I don't know. A lot of this is done in by record, so you should be doing it by writing. And you don't want to do it in the face of a steroidal cop that has a license to shoot you, uh, and and or thinks so, and will likely get away with it. You got to be cautious on where you apply what you're saying. You got to again, like I said, take on the other the other idea about investigative reporter. So new new research, they're going to be looking there. The investigative reporter looking for objective data. Now they know they now this study comes out. You can use it. If they couldn't use it, then you probe the. Objective data. You probe the clinical assessment value, and you kill you kill these things up front. And then I, well, I'm you know focusing on THC. I think everyone's minds focus on this is applicable to every imposition that some some governmental costumed official will put on you. And I've showed you year after year the discussion is right in the black and white, right in those codes that everyone wants to not use is right there to stop them. In fact, I went through the discussion again relative to some uh, ordinance in a county, a county that we're working with, uh, well, we, you know, you think you're working with them until they come up with a stupid, uh, stupid response and having to re-educate how they, there's no authority in the black and white already there that they can use to harm you. And uh, so I'm astounded that people think that they're under an authority. Why do they think that there's an authority that's, not, that's uh, oppressing them, that they're going to abandon it all? It's really just an absence. It's a, a laziness is really what it is. And again, if you're part of the society, whether or not you're a card-carrying member or if you're just in there around it, you have a you have to keep your rights. That's that republic. And, and forget this net democracy. Now. As soon as you start using the word democracy, you're off a wrong discussion. You're, you're, off, you're off the discussion. You're already into an alternative that goes nowhere. And you're arguing an alternative that goes nowhere. And I've said don't do that. I've said, stay on the narrow path of where you're supposed to be. And you go on. So we have these authorities. They put this stuff up. They want to use these records. They still have objective data to do that. Job to de- objective data, not subjective data, not feelings, not aesthetics, but objective facts have to come forward in a subject matter enough to do certain things. And now we hear right after the other other uh, story about the confirmed, but I was telling you to, what to that you can and that you should, and how, and then confirming the cautionary, the caveat that you they will be looking for adding more objective or probable cause. Well, you get this story, Goldstein, Fed scrapped 100 years of data on climate change. So they're getting rid of the record, folks. They're, they're, hiding, they're trying to hide the decline in a different way. That record is very important. 
And they have their reasons why they're going to do this, and they're going to have their reasons it's a Thorata that's been using this against you. And if you don't think this is a big deal, this is your life or your little one's life in the future, this thing that's coming in and has been coming in. It's been set up. It's all your counties in the United States of America since at least the 80s. All the regulations are there to receive this new stuff. You don't even know that, I don't think. Uh, unless you've heard me say it, you don't know that. The Fed scrap 100 years of data on climate change. How are they able to do that, folks? They have their reasons. But if they're scrapping the data, and they're telling you that it's not good, the historical data is not observed historical data. And then they tell you it is modeled historical data. 24 models of historical simulations spanning from 1950 to 2005 were used. Don't they telling you that all the models that I've been telling you that are frauds set up for the setting you up for the takedown that were the outcome based models are fraud? They're taking away the evidence of the fraud against you is what they're doing. These were all his, you, your best science is historical models. It, it, this is a I mean, I've been telling you this. This is something that's not even not even an argument. And here they come out. Why? Because some people are pushing back and pushing back in more appropriate ways. And it's not just the din of, of so-called denier, the din of the, uh, the non-alarmist against the alarmist. There's particular statements you can bring of fact, objective data uh, that is, is, is required. And you heard that in the in the other uh, report about the cannabis. It needs objective data. And this is telling, admitting that they've been using modeled historical data they can't use. As we move forward, as people start to understand more, you become more aware and you become more vocal. If there wouldn't have been a sufficient vocal response, an action response, and in particular, I, I, my mind goes to the the uh, Dr. Ball suit with the Ma Michael Mann who made global warming. With his data, remember all those were models. I told you those models are under risk assessment. So here's confirming everything I tell you. If you knew what to read for, just telling you that the, the climate change data was not even data; it was made up. This is I've been telling you. And so those of you that want a better word in your mouth and you don't want to argue and scream and yell at people, bring the, you can bring this information to. You're not going to talk to people that don't want to hear it, but. There's a ways to get at them, too, but it depends on what they are. I mean, ultimately, uh, someone who's closed off, you're not going to get to. Those of you uh, folks that uh, want to know why you talk about this stuff at all or are interested, you need to find out how it touches anybody. In this case, this quickly, uh, this, well, this is the carbon tax. This, is, uh, this climate change data that's being scrapped was supporting the, the tax that was going to raise the price of your fuel. It was going to raise triple the price of your power. And yeah, how do you like the, your power bill? And most live people don't like their power bill, so now you've got maybe maybe have their interest. You certainly get them to respond on the power bill. You're not arguing over an opinion now, are you? They don't like their power bill. Well, but part of that power bill is made to pay for this stuff that they now are scrapping, uh, are scrapping in order to uh, that was used to, to get that your power bill higher and be they're going to raise it even further. And now you get to move in and like this. Tar you hear about that carbon tax? That's how they did it. They're going to put more on you. So there's ways to get at people that don't aren't necessarily understanding the connections. You have to understand the connections better than uh, most people, and you have to then take those and re-analyze uh, how they can be moved forward. Like I said, you'd, yeah, the, the democratic system, so-called democracy, is you two two wolves deciding, you know, you the the sheep deciding what the two what what one of two wolves should choose. Well, local, you can't maybe change the the the, the federal. But locally, you can bring a third party in. And you work hard to get that third party in that you hope will work. So it's all no, no guarantees. But then you work through that third party, not on the straight up stuff. You work on how they you dismantle the infrastructure, the capacity that they built to destroy you. You start to take that down. It's a totally different view that I keep telling you. And, and here, they don't have objective data now. They were telling you, they admit all these years and all the models you've ever heard of has all been made up. And my response to this is it was put out on Climate uh, climate Action Friday. And they were going to Friday f forever, or whatever the heck, to keep telling you and moving this forward. Another politish, a politician running for office was responding against uh, another politician who, who was the President of the United States trying to put her her um, condemn Obama for his 
fossil fuel policies, notwithstanding the stance on global warming, and uh, she, her statement here is Jill Stein, beware politicians whose actions belie their words. Well, the whole condition's a fraud, folks, so why is she ba balancing his actions against something that was a fraud? He knows it's a fraud. She knows it's a fraud. But they still promote it, see, in promoting how he did it wrong. She's implying that she agrees that if you don't, if you attack fossil fuel, that you're going to support uh, climate change. It's all fraud, folks. These politicians are liars. And so I wrote out a tweet on Friday where the climate action, uh, all the global climate action uh, protests were going on. And I don't know why more people don't pick this stuff up just to be able to use it as examples for outing it and why. To bring more of the objective data forward to that you can use it as you move forward and not get into these arguments of whether or not a man caused, well, yeah, man caused global warming. It's Michael Mann. We're done with that one. Now we also have the evidence that the, the, the data is no good they used. We knew that before because man, Michael Mann made global warming. All his data was wrong. And I keep telling you the problem with that is we're missing the point. There's something going on in a, the natural scheme of things in the nature that is cause, is going through an, an alteration that we need to keep track of, otherwise we're going to get hurt. It's a natural thing. It's an oscillation within the solar system. So my response to that was Friday thoughts. Because all these Twitters, you have these tags. I just try and tie these tags together. And I tie together tags, and I see thousands and thousands and thousands of responses inside these things, and I get no response on this. It's really amazing. Uh, Friday thoughts, climate action. Is, Friday is fraud. Friday wisdom, man-made global warming is treason. Friday feeling, the cold shiver finding climate change is politics, not pollution or science. Friday motivation, behind the woodshed and a climate strike out. Now, if you go through, those are objective facts that can be proven. What's the argument? What's continuing the argument? Uh, they put this little girl now, it's, what, you know, Greta? She's been coming, she's been slowly oozing across the Atlantic in a, in a supposedly green transit across, so she didn't use those jet planes you've been complaining about, to then re be received by hardly any crowds, but then the UN system is picking her up, and then they had this big old climate action protest day. You're looking at child abuse there, folks. Greta is child abuse. I don't know why no one wants to call that out, like, call it out. No one wants to respond to it. I just wonder who we are as a people that will complain all the time about this and not really do anything to start sending a better message out. But this is the promotion that keeps coming. And in that point, at the same time, you're watching the system having to do some corrections. Because there's reality going on. What's the objective basis of what's going on? We have the days ago, ship with climate change warriors caught in ice. Warriors evacuated. How many years have that's happened now, folks? Do, at some point, I don't care. But when you're going, when I know that it's tied to this thing eventually, and this is not even the whole thing, uh, this so-called carbon tax, this so-called green jobs, these implementations and codes that you don't even know are you're already living under in the United States, and I know they're provable as treason, like I said, and I, I just remembered, I, I've got a judgment, a default judgment to the fact in 2013, I just remembered that kind of slips underneath the, the scrutiny of most everybody as well, what this all means. I know we're dealing with a bunch of organized criminals. Now, the Epstein thing points out that these people are willing to do, do uh, child abuse and in the worst ways. So what they're doing to Greta, is, is, that's almost, almost commendable. But it's child abuse nonetheless. To put uh, little ones into fear of their existence over all these, all these things is child abuse, folks. And I don't see many people calling that out, even those of people that want to, you know, that, that want to say that they adore and love their, their, their little ones. I'm just, at some point, I just don't know. I, I don't, and I know maybe I'm critical without, certainly not arguing against or discussing people who do stuff that are more correct, or actually correct, not more correct. You need to be correct in this one. But when I look around and I don't see the responses in whole, in, in just a mass wave of uh, objective response, I just wonder about us. I wonder about everyone who wants to make a complaint. And notwithstanding that, I still come every week to try and say, let's straighten that up. Let's get it fixed up. What else has happened during the same week of this protest? See, they got to make amends. they got to make it look. This is the chameleon. This is the amoeba changing its spots to try and make it more receptive. 
we get another report coming out right at the same time of this climate action, <clears throat> right where we find out that there's no data to support any of it, just as I've been telling you. And for the reason, see, it's not just that I told you that it's fraudulent, because any anyway, you can just say that it's attached to a methodology of destruction. I called it the method by name in our lawsuit. Turns out there's a method that's actually being now recognized, which kind of fascinates me, not knowing that's actually in the world now, uh, and we've already kind of got it covered. It's pretty interesting, but nonetheless, it's when you find yourself on the narrow path, narrow path, and everyone has to come to the narrow path. It's easy to be on the narrow path when everybody shows up. It's kind of like that. You say you say something long enough, and you finally find the odds of everything coincidences come together, prove it, right? And everyone takes claim for it. When in fact, it's just been a history. It's been the, you've almost been told it's coming. That, that's not a that's not a profit. All right. So I don't even want to say that. It's been written, folks. I just, for myself, and telling you about this method. It's a method. It's it's a it's how they the organized criminals come after you and take away your stuff, and you complain. You think it's you think it's government uh, ahead of global climate protests. It's before this last weekend. There's pictures of thousands and thousands of people getting involved, and really just only thousands, folks. So there's billions on this planet ahead of global climate protests. A word of reason comes from the UN itself. Now. I'll halfway go with that. It's not a word of reason. This is them moving to a more uh, nor acceptable positioning. They're not giving up. They didn't shut it all down because of what this guy says. And what this guy says is pretty interesting. And it's not much different than we said before. I've exposed this is an economic attack on you. What is, what is a carbon tax but an economic attack? And he starts pointing that out. But he says even more things. Now we, he says, this, what, who is this guy? It doesn't matter, matter who it is. Uh, what Ta Taalis, Pateri Atala, uh, Taalis. Climate pro change protesters demand the exact same policies as the glo global pol political establishment, the UN, the EU, and all the uh, global corporation, big tech, and uh, even big oil. But you see, as I said before, in the little Twitter by Jill Stein, she used that against Obama, but that's a fraud too. Because it's not about oil or big tech. They're jumping on it because they get advantage in a different way, and it's really an obtuse way they get advantage. Uh, but it's not much different than now you see Bill Gates coming on that nuclear power is the answer. And you see that he's got companies that are now designed into nuclear power. They're figuring, they see, again, tax, the taxes come involved with this. That's what the, why, why big corporations like it as well. But So there's a whole lot behind this. You can talk about global warming, but this is a whole method of bringing up and empowering legal entities that are not not you and they don't care about you. You're not a they call, you think you're a, um, a stakeholder. When you go read the paperwork, they never called you to be involved, did they? But they're making these stakeholders are making policies all the time. I keep talking to you about I tell told you how this thing works and what it's all about. You're none of what you hear. You, my listeners who are going to now pay the bill or be subject to this oppression. And you'll say nothing about it for the most part. And I don't know why, because all the answers are here. They're not arguments. Strangely, last week, the head of the world's most foremost weather science organization, let me, i got to interject. I can't even read this stuff, folks. Foremost weather science organization, you as a stakeholder, you think, did you get, did you get a vote in that they're the foremost weather science organization? Aren't they, uh, with admission that their model's no good, aren't they just the, the foremost fraudster or organized criminals? But we'll read it this way. I'm telling you, these stories aren't made to shut it down. They're made to get them repositioned so you, they look uh, invisible to you again. Uh, this is, well, so the science organization, so-called, best science is BS, folks. Best science is a question anyway in its best position. So we can go ahead and keep pop being uh, talked about. But there should have been a big old uh, rail even against the, this uh, restructuring of what the gentleman is trying to say to make it sound like that they're paying attention. Well, they aren't paying attention. This is just a move on their part. That the, uh, any rate, so strangely, last week, the head of the world's foremost weather science organization, which had created the IPCC, did you get a stakeholder choice in that? No, go look at Maurice Strong and how this all comes together, folks, please. Created. Who had, what, by what authority? The IPCC issued a surprise rebuke to climate alarmists in remarks published on September 6th marking what may be, according to some experts, one of the most significant developments in the climate debacle in decades. 
Remember, people look like, uh, in responding this way, people think that any piece of evidence is going to shut these people down. Understand these are just them changing their spots, repositioning, hiding behind a corner wall. They're not going anywhere. They're just repositioning so they get out of your, out of your, the, 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 so, the, your scope sites. They get to keep their neck from going in the rope. So get away from the gig that we called the, you know, the, the wampum that you're going to do with your, your lit torch. But none of that's happening. So I'm just talking, you know, nonsense fairy tales because none of you are out there doing any of it. But anyway, they're, they're there hiding themselves and they're doing it right now with this at the same time that they're promoting a global, a global cri a climate crisis now. Okay. Yeah, it's a crisis, but it's not going to be of man's making. Uh, we and now Mac, Michael Mann may have been just thrown under the bus and or made irrelevant because all the data doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter that that this is not um, relevant to to anything now because that they've now become a liability, and the liability then shows it's a, an inroad for you to be able to do what to do things like mm, challenge them and call them criminals and treat make committing treason like i've suggested that it is and and all this other stuff but are you going to i don't i don't think so i don't i don't think that's going to happen you know you could you could be positioned like we are you could be supportive of the things that uh, people like me do uh, more not just in your words and your support but actually get involved and the, 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 they're handing you the answer here. They're handing the the failure to shut this down is an answer to you, because this shows that they're intending to, intending to continue. Uh, anyway, I'm, my dialogue, a lot of dialogue. I don't know if people listen to what I'm saying to get active. They, maybe you, you, since you think you know this, that, that it's enough. And okay, now that we know, we can just now dismiss it all. But. So Taalas's comments were, now we should stay calm and ponder what is really the solution to these pro this problem. He's speaking to their alarmist. All right, so you've got to uh, ramp up what he, who he's speaking to. The alarmist, okay? The, that means they still agree that there's a non-alarmist condition. It's all fraud, folks, because it's not a science. And so I don't know. So inside this is I'm telling you it's an adjustment. And so we'll look for that. Continue to see that it, it's an admission as well. You can take it for that. Don't don't doubt about that. It's like them pulling about the climate, pulling back the climate um, data. But be careful because if you look at another story, they actually implemented and are pulling data from three new places now to continue making it look like their data is better. And to do that, they're having to engage what we've, I've been telling you that the, there's a sun, folks. They're having to now engage the sun. They have to now engage cosmic particles. Well, that just admits better that you are, uh, you're, they've been lying to you, that their models cannot be sufficient. So this is the, this is the, the problem with, with you. Be careful what they're saying. They don't go far enough in my mind. They continue this process. And behind the scenes, they're making it look like their data is better. They're just an organized criminal syndicate. So he goes on to say something else. It's not going to end the world. Oh, well, OAC, was it uh, the pre-chicken hatchling the escapee uh, that's a congresswoman now? Well, that blows her out of the water, doesn't it? But why didn't I see anybody just starting to nail that? No, you just let it go, let it wash away. It's not going to end the world. What is Greta doing? What are these young people that are being told, these little kindergartners, if they start to understand that your world's being destroyed? This guy comes out and says you're the end of the world. He also mentions the children at the end, at the, the, at the end as well. Remember, the ch women, children, and the indigenous is the focus. Then now they're going to sound caring. They're not going to end it. They're just going to sound like they're making more caring. It is not going to end the world. The world is just becoming more challenging. But what world? What, what part of it? What, what thing? We're talking about a climate. The world's not doing anything. The world they're talking about is their world. It's not going to end the world. The world is just becoming more challenging. They're telling you, and this is one of their duties inside this thing, is to continue their oppression and find ways to continue their oppression. And there, this is a word to the, her to the, uh, to the adherents. Don't worry, this is a challenge, but we're going to be okay if we just keep pu pushing. 
push in certain ways. The world is just becoming more challenged. Their world is becoming more challenging because you know, and more importantly, some of you are acting more appropriately to stop this. Th that is how you end this. all the subject matter constraints you've been seeing in your world. And yet I see, I hear cricket. I go, what ought to do? What am I supposed to say? I hear crickets. And, it's an, uh, and then I see those that are trying, and they, they may kind of make mistakes, and they, they learn the hard way, and it may be not so hard sometimes. You kind of get through by the skin of your teeth. You, know, you did some stuff and found out oh, that you're up against something pretty tough. And you call it abject corruption, which it is, but you, that doesn't answer the problem. You don't need to continue to call out uh, corruption once it's made apparent. You need to figure out how you're going to get at it. He goes on to say, the whole agenda has been hijacked by extremists and underlying, undermining the economy and the social stability of European countries. Look at how far-reaching that is. But it, he's, he's negating to say it's also already infested inside your country called the United States of America and every other, and then and, and, and any British uh, uh, possession. And so, again, I see he's making admissions, but he's also making room. Uh, the hijacked by extremists. They're all criminals. There's no real extremists. There's just now he's going to identify a subpart of their criminality, the criminal structure, and say that's a little better for you. This is no different than an election in a way, but it's global here. Uh, they're talking about the social econ economy and social stability of European countries. Why? If, it, if it's just a weather report, why would it be interfering with the economies and social stability? Well, go look at Agenda 21. We've talked, I've talked, gone through that one. Talked to you all about it. As I say that real quickly, what is the, the news that just came out? They're talking about a, some agreement that I, I can't quite remember how this went. The people that are, are, are trying to move and migrate from uh, Guatemala up to the United States and come to the United States, uh, El Salvador has agreed to be, if the people come through El Salvador, they've agreed to bring, bring take those people while, if they seek asylum, uh, instead of having to come to the United States. Well, you think they're going to do that for free, folks? No, there's a big dollar value behind all this that's going on, and that is predicted in Agenda 2030. Migration will be used for profit, actually to impose sustainable debt as well. And, and so it's all, you don't, I don't even have to go, it's not a question, folks. It's, well, the only question is, will you stop accepting these things and say, oh, there it is, we were right, and then go, and then stop this is just the reconfiguring of a thing that you did do uh, that outed them, that required that they do this. So here he comes, he comes to women, children, and the indigenous, and we're going to go after the children. The latest idea is that ch children are a negative thing, and I'm worried for young mothers. There's your women and your children, right? <laughs> but then you look at Greta, rowing her boat in a green boat, coming across the across the uh, the Atlantic to come and promote a an organized criminal syndicate's agenda of treason. And I call it out, and no one responds to help ed press the, the point. Yeah, fascinating to me. And then he says it, folks, what we've been saying, the green religion. This resembles religious extremism. Well, yeah, but no, it's actually more. It is a religion, not any part of which can be escaped, even those that are not the extremists. So I want you to see this story because it exposes how uh, wh how it's done. It exposes that they want it. They're taking a step back. They're trying to make a distinction with an organization that's a completely criminal organization. Will impose criminal things. They tell you what they're going to attack. This is something uh, nothing uh, short of what I've said and more. This is just the thing they're admitting to. They got to give you something right now. You focus on all that. Oh, now they're going to help us. No, these are just repositioning their position, their, their their condition in order that you'll be more accepting in the future. They fester and uh, as you turn your attention elsewhere. Elsewhere. This is the time to move against it uh, in substance. I would have to say, again, the things we do behind the scenes, uh, the, the fact that without, so without embracing democracy and who is in office and whatever their political bendings are, uh, you, you see that uh, Trump came out to deny, to dis destroy the Paris Accord and some things in climate change. I've told you that's not enough. But this is even what they have to do to keep the thing underneath some wraps. They're going to back it off, and then the next president, uh, whatever, in four to eight years, whatever it is, they can adjust it as, as everyone went to sleep, and half of us, half of those of us that know, know the study are dead. And so then they can bring it back again. 
that uh, the Trump, I just found out that the, what we do behind the scenes, long and secure, just took forever. A paper was written, and uh, what a colleague of mine was was involved in, that was the paper that was used to, to fortify why we shouldn't be in climate change. And so, when you might have a thought about what you can do and you don't like it, there's things you can do to actually shut it down. It's not shut down yet. The point is, you can be a principal part without even knowing it if you are integrated in the right place to cause some changes. Why they didn't go farther, I don't understand. But that's this thing I'm reading to you today, where they only go far enough to pull it back so that people, uh, well, first of all, they're economically destroying. The United States is interesting in that they can't bring you all into austerity that fast. And they're gonna, they have to find a different mechanism, which is usually eating away at the value of your, of your FRN. Well, I keep telling you, get off of it, figure out ways uh, to get into the gold and silver. No, not cryptocurrency. That's an eventual, well, for right now it's the Wild West, but right, it's not going to be your salvation once it starts to get imposed by these guys that won't go away. And I don't know what more to say about that. You can believe what you will. Uh, every instance as what I've told you about that at this point. However, I would like to see it work different is working right down the path uh, that the the globalists uh, that are tied in with this are going to impose. Remember, it's all, and oh, I got the links too as I move on here, but I keep moving. Uh, the uh, they remember I've told you about the, what Christine Ferreira telling us what it's all about, what all this is about, what the block, they were doing the blockchain to pull all this stuff in. He says it's economic. You don't think that you're living under with a no no currency in the world is a, well they'll call it a currency but it's not under a digital world. You don't think that's not here. You think they're pulling back from that? No, they're saying oh those those extremists over there were no good and they look like a religion, but we're over here to help you. We're from a, a non-governmental organization to help you. How's that? And so it's also in the news the same week. Uh, space researchers support the next IPCC report by creating a long-term data set for radiation belt electron forcing. All forcing, folks, is like uh, the like we would exist. Uh, you, uh, man, uh, man would make enough heat to exist without the sun. But you see, in the story, they're adjusting. This is just a, it happened in May, actually. That they're going to agree with the that the IPCC is your is your waste is your is your weather uh, per, uh, weather go to weather organization the expert and it's going to go ahead and, and use long term data sets for now radiation belt electron forcing folks that, why not before and uh, why what are they emit even if they were uh, good what if they are what if they're emitting other things which we can find so this is the firsts that they that have been uh, talked about impose like if you are in an administrative proceeding saying you made a decision here that didn't include include all this other information and without including that you're going to cause harm well they're now having to include it which uh, admits their model or current models are not good enough but they want to get you to believe that long-term data sets for radiation belt electron forcing has an understanding behind it which it doesn't and yet i'm sitting with a the knowledge they want to talk all this stuff is brand new like, no one's been watching this. If no one's watching it, how come I talk about it, folks? I mean, what, what is, what's, what's this nonsense we agree to and we don't call out and we don't uh, slam hard in order to remove from the dialogue, uh, the dialoguing, which stops the communication, which stops their ability to talk you out of something or to have you just shut up and not deal with it because you know that it's no good and you, you shouldn't, well, you're right, you shouldn't be, in, uh, you shouldn't be interfered with, but you are. You don't understand that dynamic. The presumptions against you, and you don't understand the dynamic. What was uh, what came out with this? Finally, looking at uh, radiation belt electron forcing. For me, that blows up the whole the whole a whole thing that I've talked to you about before. Something that came from me way back, way way decades ago, looking as the wanting to be a scientist and looking in and seeing neat uh, neat uh, little uh, experiments that proved a bigger world, a bigger universe out there. And so we see now we're going to now use uh, radiation belt electron forcing. What have I talked to you about that? I said, look at your anomalous magnetic fields. Your, fe your homogenization of your magnetic field is going to cause you some changing. You're not going to have the polar direction in this field, nor the type of accelerations that we would have had that would have created a boundary that we were uh, under uh, quite a few years ago. As we all understand now, we're now, when they finally tell you the truth, we're going into a minimum. 
I don't have all the dynamic. I have a, an observation that I made, and it's held up all these years, and I think this is coming again. They're having to recognize something they won't recognize, showing that proving that the IPC's models are wrong, have been wrong, can't be complete enough, can't even agree, even if they took this data, what it means, and they'll deny the rest of the potentials, but it brings up the fact of what I looked at decades ago, uh, the idea even, and I wrote a Twitter out because of the way this came out. Uh, decades ago, I was introduced to to these. What it, these were were the experiments of the radio, the looking at cosmic rays in that little uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol chamber. And if you look very carefully and watch, it doesn't look like very impressive. That's like a microscopic level of a bigger thing. And you see how you can see traces of these cosmic rays coming into our environment. And these uh, these these electron bands that are supposed to protect us are now being changed a bit and altered and all kinds of stuff. So it's, if you say weakened, it's, it's not as polar. And then you have the problem of causing eddy conduits that come actually to the ground. NASA's all found all this. So I'm thinking my mind's just kind of racing along thinking this is kind of cool because now we're getting closer to the real science that we need to know. Even though we don't understand it, it's there. Maybe I don't understand it. I understand a little bit. And there's going to be some smarter, you know, real intelligent people that really work this out when we want to. And stop listening to these fraud, these fraudsters that are killing, literally going to kill us if we don't understand it. Remember, last week I was talking to you about the guy putting his hands on the mountains and feeling uh, St. Elmo's fire, right? It was right above him. Now, I want you to consider that in a, if you uh, look at some of these video, the video links of a, of a chamber that has, uh, it's alcohol in this case, that's cooled down uh, uh, to by 76 degrees below zero for dry ice temperature, or a little above that because of the temperature gradient. But at any rate, you'll see a wave. You'll see a wave. Consider that as your troposphere, uh, where all the moisture sits, most of all the moisture sits right there, right above the mountaintops. And you're right in that where you got you can now see that underneath this experiment, uh, part of cosmic rays can cause uh, nucleation to happen and cause clouds. Well, you look, they're kind of short term. Then I found, I said, well, I'm on this. Let me look at something else. And I went out, and there's someone on the internet for all the little, all the stuff you won't learn. There's stuff you can observe. There's on the internet someone decides to actually do a, a high, high, high uh, intensity spark into one of those chambers. And I have a link for that. Pretty fascinating. And so together with my idea that I, our, our polar, we have our polar homogenization going on, that would all allow us an increase in our cosmic ray penetration because it's not as polar, uh, the polar, the polar currents are not enough to grab them up as much. The conduction bands don't protect as much protectivity, uh, uh, won't be as protective. Uh, we also have the conductive conduit creation that the eddies and all the magnetism laws that we know about, even though we don't understand magnetism, we have enough laws to kind of see the operas, um, observational things that will cause us to be able to get into better ideas. You, know, you see oh, the conduction band problem that could start, and then you go see this video where someone actually took an electrode off a, a, a Van de Graaff generator and discharges it into one of these chambers, and I want you to go there, and I want you to kind of go ahead and watch it, but then watch it a couple times, and consider what you're seeing is this the troposphere layer being hit by a big, uh, big discharge through an energy conduit. And tell me if you don't see cloud creation on a mass level with a whole lot more than cosmic rays. Am I saying that there's the proof to how this works? No, but you have an example of an observational view that may actually warp your mind a bit to start saying, well, there's a whole lot of dynamics we don't understand. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I don't think I've been too off too far. I don't understand the whole thing, but there's just some observations as a, as a young guy trying to, a young kid still coming up being, and I was when I had, had teachers that were encouraging all this stuff as well. Observations when you make them and the teacher didn't even see that is kind of fun, kind of encouraging a bit that you still have something to go learn that I've heard over decades been thrown down and absolutely not used. And now recently people taking claim for finding it. Folks, these are just op. These are just us finally being observant of reality. No, really, no claim to be made. Anyway, so you you watch and see what a high energy discharge from an eroding uh, energy conduction band into the Earth, which NASA's found happens. You tell me what it does to your the the area below uh, the area where most of the water vapor is and most of the the interaction of temperature is. You tell me what happens there when you see that energy touching that uh, touching that area. Now I want to remind you again at the guy on the mountain with this uh, St. Olaf's fire. Do you think that that energy is almost touching the ground? And the troposphere is a lot taller than that above the mountains. It's higher than the, uh, the topest mountains. And this guy could touch that type of energy? 
Wow, pretty neat. I, I get kind of excited actually because that's I mean more of the nature is just beyond almost beyond description. But we'll be we'll be funneled into these. You can go ahead and keep being funneled into these other guys that are going to limit your awareness to their models. They agree are no good, and then try to get you to believe they can do a different model. Or the next thing they pick up is enough. And I'm looking at the real serious part of this. When you see people this year, the floods and the whatever, what all the, the climatic uh, disturbances that people are not used to happening. There's something going on, but it's not because man, Michael Mann's a fraudulent uh, hockey stick. It's be, because there's something going on, and we better understand that. And so instead of having Greta come along across the uh, the child abused victim, child abuse victim coming across sailing across the uh, the Atlantic Ocean to have a bunch of people uh, promote the crime against uh, mankind, I'd, I'd rather have her understand we don't know what's going on and. Instead of promoting that carbon is a, which is a mitigating gas, if you get it up in the mesosphere, it's actually a mitigating gas. NASA found that out too. No, we have a, she's way too young to understand. I'm going to have to say, except for my, my studies is from started around seven or ten, seven to eight or nine, somewhere more where I started. I think I started to get a handle on this at age 10, meteorological conditions, our atmosphere, our environment. Uh, that uh, because I was handed a, a, a study uh, uh, modules for that, as I told you before, uh, that focused me, and I was always interested in it. I wouldn't have had a clue about the dynamic at all. No, how much I've forgotten now, I don't even know to tell you. I, I literally know. I think I believe I know what it means to n- have forgotten more than I know. Uh, but anyway, so here we can believe all these people that the next data stream is going to say something. Or we can start looking around and be observant and be our own scientists and realize we don't have a clue. And that failure better be what what gets us excited because the environment now touches everybody. I don't mean the environmentalist environment, the alarmist environment, even the one that tries to cut itself loose with the extremists within the environmental terrorist group. No, the real one. Whether I'm right or wrong that these things are actually interactive isn't relevant to the fact that you can see them in nature responding. The actual cause and effect of which I may not really understand, but I can see where there's experiments that say, hey, there's something bigger than they're even talking about. If I can do a discharge into the atmosphere in the in the top of the troposphere, and I can cause clouds that stay a whole lot longer than a cosmic ray, then I maybe should be considering something. I better be looking at that. Oh, yeah, it's alcohol and, and freezing. Well, get a, look at the temperature at, at, at altitude, folks. You'll, you'll see right at the top of the troposphere, it's at the temperature of a, of a dry ice experiment. And yet, it, and yet it's, a, it's not, it's, it's, it's not um, sublimated yet, like it does right above that. In this, what, the stratosphere? Is that the next level up? See, I don't remember some of this stuff. Folks. It's just something that sticks in my mind. The little things that seem more important are what sticks anymore. And enough to tell me there's so much there that these people who want to tell us that the extremists within their group are no good, or you but still have to believe me, even though they weren't powerful enough to stop the extremists in their group, and the agenda never stops, and nobody you hear today or anything you'll read will, in these people will ever shut down this it's a juggernaut now until you step up and then you'll find out how much of a paper airplane it is. All right, so this is the whole point. And I, part of me is a little bit disgusted. And part of me is a little dismayed. The this is, folks. Uh, how can we not stop this thing that's so clearly and blatantly criminal and so clearly and blatantly absurd? And we feel content on just arguing that we're right about its, uh, its problem. And I'm telling you, it took more. We we have a um, what it took for at least for me was to be able to pull together this information back in 2013 into a law, an equity lawsuit, which exposed it. I don't know what more I get to do here with that. I don't know what more I have to do. But here it is. I mean, this is how it rolls out. I keep telling you, this is identifiable. There's a method. The method. Who was that, uh, Gary? Does your name just in my mind, Gary? The method with uh, what suspects guy? You guys were talking about that. What, what do I know about that? But there it is. You go look at that. Another thing, another hand, another way to manipulate people. Right there. And guess what? It doesn't affect those of us that see through it. I tell you, about this, that's the that's what I learned out of the uh, these the what was it called the see so, uh, these things aren't really relevant. To, I'm just going to tell you uh, what is it um, the protocols, the elders of Zion. It's, that's how I learned that. Like, they told me that, folks. Whoever they were, even the counterfeit that it is, even the people that would denounce the people that wrote that up. You don't even know who that is either, but that doesn't matter. 
there's a truth in there that I got, I gained from being experienced with that. And I found, I'm trying to, I told you this before, you don't know where you're going to be played. You better be protective of that. And since I've been doing that, there's very few places I know that I've been played. And those I don't know, I guess I'm going to have to learn. But it hasn't, esta- it hasn't stopped me from looking at this thing, I think, very objectively and taking the better decisions and doing the better things that I'm asking you all to step up into. Because I really do believe if we were universally understanding of the fraud against us, uh, what, notwithstanding how official uh, it looks, we would start to stop. It just stops, folks. And so here we go. Keep going. I wasn't even going to get on the climate thing. It just happened to be what rolled out this week about how the fraud gets done and what they do to, to interject. I started to remember what the THC, and I told you how we can look at that. I don't, wasn't wrong. In ex- Again, I'm trying, so I'm trying to show you those that you either hesitate or you think I've got a whatever an opinion or you think i'm okay but you know to what extent i'm just trying to show you you can take the lead i give you to the trail take it to the bank and move from there okay move from there you'll find the truth you need you may have modifications to what i'm saying but it won't be a a false truth that i'm telling you or it it may not be complete but it's going to be accurate enough to keep you there and keep you in the right stuff immediately so that you're not becoming victimized to this stuff. So here, here going on, another climate alarmist admits real motive behind uh, warming scare. This came back up because of what the first guy said. It's actually old information, but the first word, what have I been saying? It's, it's treason. It's fraud. What have I been saying? It's not a hoax, folks. This is fraud against mankind. This is a treason against at least the United States where we have property rights and the the promise, if you, if you can't hold on to it, the promise that nothing is punitive. And the courts have even agreed that it's not supposed to be. And your silence is allowing this other stuff. But here it is, right off the, the first word on this article is fraud. Colon. No, don't think that way. But while the global warming alarmists have done a good job of spreading fright, they haven't done so good at hiding their real motivation. All this is is a restatement of what I told you before about the economic imposition, and people are restating that now since they're starting to see the truth. It's important that these people write about this. What I'm saying is that's not important if there's no one else going to do anything about it, even them. If they're not going to take this with the authority of a publisher as an editor uh, in a publication and then attacking with their authority, uh, it, does, it goes nowhere. See, this is they're gonna this other side that's now re- reconfiguring what it is is going to be there when they go away, or when I go away. And I don't want to read more. I mean, I could read. It's interesting. It tells you what's they're after the capitalism of the world, folks. These are either communists or socialists. I don't care what you call it. These people are counter to a republican form government that respects property. I'll just leave it right there. We do have to expand it greater, but it's not necessary. I've told you how to identify your republic with inside this this administrative world. And I explained it last week relative to the legislature telling the judiciary to, they don't have a jurisdiction over what? The interferences of, of congressional grants, which are treat, domestic treaties, and their uh, a, the a state's a, a contested case hearings officer has no authority over anything more than what the state issues and in the in the patent, the state issues nothing to show you that's your republic. That's all the capitalism that you need, and that's the first thing that these jerks, uh, these global welfare state jerks, are after. And you read that aware in uh, Agenda 21, uh, inside the what Article 7, I think you can see that. Not just again following the Marxist type of uh, philosophy, philosophy, falafel. Uh, so uh, again, I don't even know why. I, I'm realizing now there's lots of climate change stuff. It has nothing to do with that today. It has to do with identify using this to identify uh, the condition, and people are restating what I've told you over in years. What was the real point? And that it's not science, it's politics. Anybody who denounces the politics of this doesn't understand. They'll never be able to address it. Their responses will be off the mark. I just, I don't know what else to say about that. And I, and they'll, and these people that understand that much are intelligent enough, they'll argue with me and not under, and not be intelligent enough further to actually listen and adjust. It's just an adjustment. It's like when I'm dealing with a colleagues of mine, and, I, and they, they go down the path they want. I said, oh, I'm at, you need to put in this sentence. You need to throw this sentence into what you, how you want to go so that we preserve the law down the road for this condition. And yet I, will, I, get, I even get, from my colleagues, I get resistance. 
Well, where does that knowledge come from? I don't know more than I've been dealing with this for three go over three decades now, folks, and looking very intently to see what happened to this place. And then having to throw down the fact, okay, I had an expectation, it's not meeting it, but where did it go beyond that? And now what do we do? Not just throw it out, oh, it's democracy, it's no good, forget it. No, what do we do inside a, a, a usurpation of democracy on a republic we were to keep? And where, what is that republic? Your, your notions of it or how it actually is supposed to function? And I keep telling you the way I got it focused to me, notwithstanding the preparation it took me to get to the point when I started to see it, was in grant land disposal grants. And you look at the entirety of the relationships and all that. Then you look at the restrictions against interference with that. And that's your free, you being free. In there. It does it. It means that you have to understand that and you have to impose it. Assert the right that you have, in, are, are right, have right to impose uh, upon a, a, a trespass. I don't know why I start stuttering there. I'm just trying to get the words out, but. Anyway, so then we have another one. UN official reveals the scam. After the fraud, you re reveals the scam. It's this economic systems. They want your, they want control of you, like the Fed got control of you when you used their Federal Reserve uh, uh, notes. So that's a hypocrisy because you just you can stop it quickly by by beginning to wean yourself from it. And I'm not saying that's easy. I'm just saying that's what needs to be done. Real reason for climate, that just came out. As soon as this, this, everyone's trying to prove they can point to you what the real reason about how the, the climate change is no good, all this imposition, it ends up becoming more and more everyone realizes the attack on what we call capitalism. The capital is your, you, as a, as a man or woman, putting your work into something. The capital expenditure in for a, a, a value. And that's all mining law is, and that's all farming is. It's strict liability to nature. You, you, you don't learn. You know, minor, model, models might help you, but you're going to have to come up with the independent thought that actually makes the final decision based on what reality there is or the one you find out you didn't know about. So I, I put together the attack. You know, the, Everyone's trying to get these political attacks. One politician or politician wannabe wants to attack another one to try and show that they've got a different position. And, the, and everyone that's interested jumps on, on either side when both sides are no good for you. No, both sides admit to the fraud, but don't ad admit, don't expose it within the politician themselves. And I tweeted that out when I said Friday thoughts and the climate action is Friday fraud. I'm just... Not that anybody really has to forward it, but in my mind, if we're actually going to do something, whoever has a, a, a substantial thing to point out, you'd think that one would be repeated. When I looked around, I saw lots of people wanting to repeat the two sides and continue the fraud. I, I pointed out the fact that both the politicians, the politician and the politician wannabe, were not exposing to you that this whole thing is fraud. And I get, I get crickets about how you've been responding to all that. It's fascinating to me. So as long as we're absent about responding to that, these people, I can just tell you these people are going to get what, what they got going, with what they have. I said no concurrence and no detractors. When I stated that this was a fraud, a man -made, Michael Mann made uh, warming is treason, and you're going to find out the cold shiver planning climate change is politics, I'm also referring, folks, if it looks like we're going to have a cold shiver. In fact, we did not get the season of August this year. We went right from spring to fall. August never showed up. And that kind of messed me up big time because I had a lot of things that needed to be done right in that little time scale that usually always happens. So is climate changing? Well, I don't think on the, on the not on the political definition, but certainly on the reality uh, side. And so uh, I want to just remind you here. I put out a I put out a statement. There was no concurrence with it. There was no detractors. And so I don't know. Maybe that's the Twitter tannic, right? That's the the the, the shadow banning. So I just. Facts and reality sinking fast with the censorship called Twitter Tannic. I don't know if that's the truth, but it sure seemed like because when I went to go search the terms that I used inside the tweet, it didn't on an independent browser that's not connected or signed in with through a proxy. Uh, none of the words uh, came up that exposed what I had twittered out, and so I felt maybe we're being shadow banned. But then, so I then tied in another one just to test that, and I did get a response. So maybe that's the truth. But I said, uh, yes, beware, the politicians are liars indeed. 
Remember, you know them when you see them. You don't. Their deeds will tell you. You don't have to watch, listen to their words. And this is Jill Stein talking against Obama, and they both agree on uh, punitive harms against you through a fraud called uh, climate change and or the performance of the uh, imposition of sustainable development and all this other stuff. The liars indeed, or by fraudulent self-serving omission of facts denying reality, surviving by the sound of drowned crickets. Uh, a little bit of maybe non-poetic poetic license, but I'm serious there. The crickets are drowned. That's the sound of silence against both these politicians. One trying to take advantage of the other. They both know that you choose either side of that, they win. And then I got silence on top of that. And so you can think it's not important. I find it very important. And that's why I wonder when I don't see a whole lot of uh, concurrence with directions that I'm advocating that you all do. It's not, you know, in a way, it's it's on the, the responsibility is on you, but it'll, it, there's nothing to blame there now for me. You've chosen, you've chosen to bring on this thing that's stoppable, absolutely stoppable, and despite their impositions, like the presumption that the IPCC is the weather group for the nation, for the excuse me, for the globe. And the stakeholder that you thought you were didn't get asked. That should have been uh, should be a big deal, and, uh, but that's not the point either. Because I'm not talking about that in my mind. I'm saying every other subject matter. You are not engaging locally. This is how the minions take you down. And I and it sounds like it's over. It's almost overwhelming. You can't take care of it. A lot of it. And, and actually, you can't in a way. But that's where it takes a lot of us. And I think we could. What I got involved with with the mining dis, um, mineral dis, land disposal in the mining law, it just happens that that law touches every almost every aspect of our lives, be it water, minerals for our production, production itself uh, being something the foundation of a society, the value of it to, to, to the to the beginnings of the society and the coherent uh, coherent uh, cohesion of a society, uh, the rights and property involved, the ingress and egress, your rights of uh, using the road is all tied in. The right to make food, the right to use timber, is all sitting in a miner's rights. It ended up, it ends up being the, the crux, if you will, the only last evidence I could see where those rights are recognized but for a criminal occupation of some sort, whether that be internal agency, uh, why we're showing now even Washington, D.C., we we're the only answer that they have is what we've been presenting to them uh, because it's in the law and it's in the reality. The, or whether locally you're trying to be run down and you forget that you there is that republic to keep for you, not not for the next guy. You can help try to help them, but the republic for your property is kept within the black and white already lit, written, and it's there. If you are silent to any of it, what else would you expect to see that your stuff is stolen? Whatever your stuff is, whatever you... Uh, you believe that is in, in your in, within government or your rights or your antecedent before government rights, all that stuff, your God-given rights, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you don't enforce them correctly or in the proper way, and there's a proper way. So I don't know why people deny that, but well, I shouldn't have to. Well, well, that's why that's what crime is a, a example why you have to. And the caucusocracy, the, the, they have the word at all. The, that crime rising to the level of government or the appearance of government, is your problem. You can't turn away from that. And so then those guys get in, pro and then they, they make impositions that they shouldn't be able to make, but you never call them out. And you'll, if you look very carefully, there are outs. You just have to take them, and so you have to know what those are. And yes, I don't like to have to figure out what those are, but over decades, I've, I've, I think I've done a couple of those things. And that leads me to a knowledge that maybe a lot of people don't have, that I speak through, may not explain it, uh, but in doing that, I also see that as we move the wrong ways, we don't assert the right ways, and these presumptions that sit us by the occupiers that were uh, under the color of an authority, they kill us, they take us down, they beat us down. And so what's this IPCC? I make a question of it. Well, how did you become the global uh, science group when you're just a bunch of organized criminal fraudsters? Where did that happen? But I don't do it as a question. I have another proof that I'm going to bring up. That you're, What have I said before? We bring them into felony real quick. Because it's a color of authority that you're trying to use to take us to take something that's mine that's not theirs. In a republic. In a democracy, you're mob rule. Forget it. You don't have any of those rights. You have it subject to whatever the mob says. And that's, the, that's all I'm repeating is the, about two-thirds in the way into the Human Rights Declaration. 
you look all your rights. They talk about what I've seen the technocrat uh, the technocrat uh, website talking about technocracy. He mentioned about your Article Three rights. I said, yeah, but there's a there's an article you go down about two thirds way through, and it says all that's subject to the state, subject to the authority. Look very carefully, folks, what you have and what you don't have. And so we but then we go off on the on a, on a bad idea because someone had thought we thought had a good idea, and now I want to transition over what like the IPCC says they have the world they're the world science science officials organization. Well, they're not. They're fraudsters. A bunch of best science is BS, folks. That's just the fact. It's political lobbying. It's a political condition. You want to get into science? Get into science. They're not the same. Don't allow people to split that hair against you and, and try to make relevance when they're still just criminals. They just wear a better suit. Now, let's move into how some of that gets happening. Uh, I saw, and I didn't, I don't have the video to go to. I just want to talk to how this happens. IPCC is claiming a jurisdiction. The world. It's up to you to, to, to deny it when it becomes relevant, not generally but when it becomes relevant. We can do that relative to a local imposition of uh, maybe the carbon tax or whatever that on top of a bunch of other things. But let's get in touch about this jurisdiction they claim over. It's a subject matter. In this case, uh, climate change, like they have a, the, like the IPCC can change the climate of the world upon a decision, uh, which shows you the, the stupidity behind that. But they're claiming a jurisdiction. What does that word mean? And this applies everywhere that any authority exists. Any barrier you want to see, there's a boundary you don't agree with inside that so-called boundary. You know is invisible if someone believes that they have authority. Those And those things are a fact in the world. All right? Just like they were now finding out their historic data is no good. It's just on models. Everything you go through, look, the Model Business Corporation Act for governments, right? Another model. And you can agree with it, or you can learn how to destroy it. And I've been asking you to learn, start learning how to start destroying it. Don't go arrogant on it, because they'll beat you down, because they they're the power. They're the ones that can kill you. They're the ones that can stick you in a cage. They're the ones that can thump, you, thump on you, and look like it's justified to everybody else that doesn't understand. All right, this is, how, this is part of the other problem. And I don't know how to resolve a lot of these things in the real time, except to you have to be more integrated. And so let me go through. I saw a video where some two people were trying to do jurisdictional challenges. Uh, I'll just tell you they were of old patriot ideas that seemed to work at the time. And the, again, you would bring this stuff to a court the first couple of times that you'll get around it. But after that, they learn what you're doing or what, what you're not doing right. And they, and, they've, and they get actually more technical is what I found they do. So what's this jurisdiction? What's this weird word, jurisdiction? And I just went to the legal dictionary. You can find it, too. We're going to go through some things, and I want to show you a couple things. Uh, when someone's coming against you or says they have an authority, do they really? And maybe how you start to learn how to, how to address it. The IPCC has not shown me, has no evidence to show me they have subject matter jurisdiction over the weather of the world. They have, no, uh, have not shown me they have expertise in being the authority for the weather of the world. They have no jurisdiction over the territories over the weather of the world. They have no jurisdiction over the plan or the their organization over the weather of the world. We can go right down the list. I won't bore you. It goes on and on, folks, if you really start to understand that. And then you got to understand how to prep, present it correctly. And so what's, what's jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is not something that you, you, you prove, having something prove. It's either an evidence or it's not. It's really a simple response. You just looking for the evidence of its, of its lawful existence in evidentiary form, which has a standard as well. So you walk around and try to well, prove your jurisdiction. Well, you're going to be, get beat down because you don't understand there's a presumption of an occupying power around you. And that's the thing that's hurting people, one of the things. Yes, there's ways, there's things to do. Jurisdiction is what? Well, read it. But you have to understand there's not just one. And authorita, the uniform costumed authority, yeah, they utilize the multiplicity of these things in order to defeat you. If you only focus on one, they got three more. What did they just do? I just pointed it out. What they, oh, the extremists within our group are, uh, are need to be toned down, implying they're not an extremist. But what we have to sell you, what you want to, what we want you to buy into, is still okay. It's still all good. You need to see how this works. This is what they do in these jurisdictions. Listen for the different types of jurisdiction. 
And as they apply to someone coming at you, like the IPCC, or even a scientist, or a university professor, or some code enforcement, or some local commissioner, or whatever, start looking and listening, and then you got to think clearly and consistently on how that would apply. Let me give you a head, a head up here before I get going. Remember I just told you uh, the patent in your land cannot be touched by a judicial officer. All right, there's no authority in any other officer of the state to touch it, so that's off limits. The, and we know that because the administrative function, the executive, within a county or in a state or the federal, uh, has uh, no uh, right in their authority to do anything other than to decide on it, paperwork or permissions or licenses that have issued from that government. And in the middle, we have this patent that's not issued by a, but by tr as a treaty, by a, an, a by a by a, a source of authority that neither the judiciary or the executive branch and administration can touch. And so you have the third way. The third way that they impose internationally is the third way of your destruction. It that third way tries to replace your third way. Your third way is impervious if you know that. And it's about understanding their jurisdiction and authority. If the state has no authority for their judiciary over the patent, which is yours privately when you are an assignee or an heir, and uh, they prove it by saying that their administrative function can't touch it by their, their contested case, aren't you in a position that you have the jurisdiction and authority over your own property? And they have none. Again, again you hold against the whole world, even the government. All right, so... This is why understanding this jurisdiction is important. And so it's not just, that's jurisdiction over the documents of the proof of the territory that you own, that you have absolute determination within the rights you have. In other words, you don't make decisions that affect others, well, at least until they complain, and then some other things. Uh, however, you have to understand, and when your thoughts, you can't, don't put it bipartisan and, and by, uh, two, two way, uh, one left or right, uh, don't, two election officials, the elected official has authority. Well, maybe they don't have authority, authority over something they never had authority over. And you have to find what that is if you possess it, and that's what you have to protect, an encroachment on your jurisdiction. Oh boy, do I, no silver bullets, no shields. All right, you don't do it right, they take you down anyway. And so here's what's going on to this thing about jurisdiction. Let me read a couple things. So these words are neutral. You, they can apply depending on where they're applicable, and this is what I'm telling you to be fluid in applying. Jurisdiction is the authority granted by law to the courts to rule on legal matters and render judgments according to the subject matter of the case in the geographical region in which the issue took place. A lot of legal words in there, too. All right? The courts, granted to the bylaw to the courts. I just told you and there's a, there's a, there should be a statute that precludes, I know one was one in one state, precludes the, the courts to decide at all. That takes their jurisdiction away completely, doesn't it? It doesn't matter what they're to rule on or the judgment they're supposed to have or the subject matter, does it? The subject matter is not a, a touchable by the by the courts, but they it's the authority. This jurisdiction is the authority granted by the law. So they you have every right to see the evidence of that authority that was granted by law for them to do it. Now, you've got to be careful. These people are, are shady dealers, and you have to be careful what you're, they're telling you. But anyway, this is the definition it's the authority granted by law to the court to rule on legal matters, render judgments according to subject matter of the case, and geographical region in which the issue took place. Geographical region, would that, inf that, would that pri be, uh, include the private nature of your property? Likely not, if you knew about that. And what about the issue? The issue is the question. The issue is the argument. What have I told you? Take that away. Make it, make it that there is none, and that the what you then do is expose the the complaint as a felony against your property and rights. It's extortion or coercion. If you can, if they state an authority inside the document of complaint, you got them for official, you got them under the black, same black and white, granted by law, that says that you can go after them as a, as an extortion or coercion. You can't do it until you can do that. So don't be, again, no silver bullets, but there it is. I've just kind of given you the whole thing I've been telling you for 10 years. All wrapped up in the first paragraph of what a jurisdiction is and how people attack you through it wrongly and how to stop that. So a jurisdiction it applies to an area of local, state, federal laws, which means that, for instance, a violation of federal law is tried in federal court. To explore this concept, consider the following, juris uh, following jurisdiction definition. 
And, okay. Definition of jurisdiction is a noun. The power of authority to administer justice by hearing and deciding legal cases. What I said before, a case in law, the evidence of patent is in law. It doesn't ever get to the court, does it? At any rate, number two, the territory over which the, uh, such authority is exercised. And this one's a little bit of confuser because it sounds similar to the first. The ter so this number two, number three. The, the last one was territory over which the authority is exercised. Such authority is exercised. And number three is the geographic area of the court's legal authority or of any law enforcement agency. So they've added a they've added a, a uh, an extension into law enforcement itself. And and so that's the geographic area that we can say that's like the uh, sheriff and the the limit of the the sheriff of uh, and the limit of the county relative to a court's jurisdiction which might extend over a county and the territories uh, territorial area. And then I want to throw in the uh, the idea to you if you find out, and, and they haven't proven, because you know your state's underneath the Model Business Corporation Act, where's the territory of the corporation relative to your property rights or whatever that they're trying to say is a thing you need to hold out in your mind as we go through a little bit of this. What is jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is the term that refers to limits of legal authority. The limits of legal authority. It can refer to the both political territories and geographic regions, as well as the types of legal matters, the types of legal matters over which a legal body has authority. A formally authorized legal body is another challenge right there. A formally authorized, you don't know evidence of you're formally authorized over me, or the subject matter, or the geography, or the territory. How's that for an avoidance, or at least even, as I would now run, run it through, an equitable challenge? And a challenge in equity, excuse me. Here, a formally authorized legal body. What do you think a quite uh, uh, quo warranto does, folks? And I told you it's not just on their damn signature. Would you stop doing that too to yourself? There's a whole lot more behind what authorizes a court or the officer in it. Uh, a formally authorized legal body is a court, political, or governmental office, and in many situations, law enforcement agency. Agency is executive. Courts are judicial. Understand what this definition is telling you. And you have to keep track, otherwise you're going to walk in thinking you're doing one thing and they're tre treating you some way else. And so you go in there thinking that you know what's going on instead of looking for the evidence of what's going on. When a legal body holds jurisdiction, it has the authority to administer justice within that jurisdiction. When a legal body holds jurisdiction, they don't tell you which one or any of it, one or all. Well, that's the any of it at this point. So just know that one. When a legal body holds jurisdiction, it has authority to administer justice within that jurisdiction. There's another requirement. Have they shown they can? And if you have a counter evidence, you better have it available, and you should. Not your opinion, the facts. Anyway, anyway, going on, again, the definition here, not the application. Now, in the court system, judicial branch, all right, now they're going to attach administrative. You saw this under police authority, didn't you? Administrative is police authority. Keep track of that. And so you don't say nothing about it, you're just keeping track of it because it determines on how you're going to go through an understanding or asking for what's going on if you don't understand the charges, if you understand where I'm leading with that. And you don't understand the charges of code enforcement when they first approach either, and you get to do the very same thing here as you do in a traffic court case or any other kind of case like that where they ask you if you understand the charges under the false presentment that you're under a criminal thing. You get to do the same thing. It's no different. You don't ask them to prove it. You just say, "There's no. Uh, where's the evidence? Uh, I need the evidence so I can understand. And that's not even all of it either. But you don't have to talk a lot. Okay, so in a court system, there are three primary types of jurisdiction. So uh, this is what hurts me. Truly, I mean, I. in some regard, what can I say here? It hurts me, folks. I see this, and I see people going into the, the videos, and I hear people, the stories that come to me. Well, we did this, and we did this, and then we, we suffered this. And I'm just listening, I'm what, I'm listening to what they say, and they miss this point. The court has three primary types of jurisdiction. If you didn't know that, and you only argued one, and there's two other ones sitting there, do you think that maybe they can tell you they got jurisdiction and beat you up and justified? That's the videos I see. That's the tales of horror I hear. And so, let's, three types. And there's more than this. Don't get confused. Don't get lost. It's easy to get it once you figure out how to work it out. It's a little, they've made it a little bit convoluted to figure out how to look at it. But I'm here to tell you a little bit of it so you can start to look for it. And it straightens up pretty quick. 
The three types are subject matter, territorial, and in personam jurisdiction. Now, I'm not, again, there's tons to discuss here, but I, and I can't, but the subject matter is over the subject of well, the, the charge, the, 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 the traffic tickets, motor vehicle code. Territorial is where, uh, this, is a, this apparently would be the local jurisdiction, because it's not the judicial jurisdiction, correct? The, the, whether or not the, uh, the complaint fits inside a territorial place, and in personam, there's a person that they have. Well, these are presumptions of that it's done correctly. The government, even the occupier, well, the occupier gave itself, even the, the, the de jure government gave itself the authority to presume it's right. And when you read the court cases, you'll see how serious that imposition is and how difficult it is to, well, it actually corrects your thinking. How do you get around this almost, it's an almost impossible presumption in a way until you start understanding what I'm telling you. And so we have subject matter, territorial, and in personam. If someone walks into the court, and this is relating to that video, and they argue, prove subject matter jurisdiction, and the court comes back and says, I've got jurisdiction, but won't say it because he's now the the one who's under the jurisdiction in person doesn't understand, and he's only arguing subject matter. Do you think he, the court can justify the beatdown that the guy got in, in the video? No, it's not justified. But in a criminal sense, uh, he's he's plausibly has authority because the guy that was thinking he was doing because he's been told subject matter jurisdiction is all that it is and it's a lot, but it's not personum, and so you got to be careful. Uh, he got beat down eventually. Well, someone before did a patriot idea, and it was uh, don't get in, don't don't trend, don't transgress the bar, no, stay outside the bar. Well, if you're out there just staying and resistant, the presumption is your subject. In fact, uh, my contention on this, and it has been anymore. You don't end, if you do the right paperwork, you're not going in to stand anywhere. You're, you're doing the paperwork, and they're having to contend with your paperwork, not a motion, a, a collateral attack. Uh, the presentation of information that they have to give you before you can understand the charges, all done in paperwork. But anyway, you're standing there, and oh, I don't want to cross the bar. And then that lady got beat down. And so they learn these tricks, the system learned these tricks a long time ago, and even if it's wrong what they do, they're still doing it, you have to take cognizance of that they do that. And I've looked and said, there's ways around it. Well, I've kind of removed myself from the whole question, and then I put something on them for them to have to, have to chew on. I've, as I said, I've become a porcupine. Anybody that knows me becomes a porcupine, and at worst, it's a stalemate. It's not, we don't see the beatdowns at all. And so, subject matter, territorial, and impersonum. That's the person they have before you. And if they presume you to be having civil liabilities, obligations, and duties, and privileges, you're presumed subject to a court or a hearings, condi a hearings officer. It's a presumption. Do you understand what presumptions do? They exist as a fiction of truth in the, fa in the absence of a rebuttal of evidence to the contrary. And that rebuttal of evidence isn't necessarily something you just prove. It could be something that you ask. Because what's required is a burden of proof on the complaining party, not you. And so you go and you tell the judge, you're supposed to be sitting impartial, prove to me you have subject matter jurisdiction. He doesn't need it. He's got personam. You're talking to him. He's also got implied territorial presumed. Because you're standing in the courtroom, even at the bar, or even in the so-called county, that they have put their veneer over. And so if you think you're going to go and make these tricks, you think it's going to work, it's predictable what I see happening. It's sad, but it's predictable. And I'm not saying I have the only way or the absolute right way. I'm having, I have a way, we have a way we address this stuff. It's working so far, but as soon as they figure out, you know, whatever they want to figure out, they want to figure out something out and put some attention to it, we may have to adjust. Why? Because they live in an occupied condition. And so your choice is, do you want to get uh, try to do what you hear? You just give in to them. Or do you want to make a resistance? And, and do you want to make it a better resistance? You have a beat-down resistance. It doesn't mean you still don't have some remedies. In fact, you've got harm, though, when they do that. Uh, and if, you, if, the, if the ones I saw in the, in the video understood what they were doing, uh, they could uh, then work like so-called pro se and say, listen, oh, this is coming back later with some paperwork. This is what I was asking you, and you beat me down. You didn't have the right to beat me down. And then agree that they, you may have had presumed persona in jurisdiction, but the subject matter I was asking you about wasn't in record, and you still beat me down. 
And you back around, you get back to the subject matter because the subject matter is what? An evidence that you are subject to that court under a particular general jurisdiction jurisdiction. Do they have jurisdiction over the rights of the use of your property? No. So they can't get personam. You have no civil liberty uh, obligations and privileges underneath that. Well, you do, but it's, it's in grant. Uh, again, um, t understanding title and really the, 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 the nuts and bolts and the and the chronology of it all really helped me. I'll just tell you that. That's one thing I can tell you. You have to really start looking at that. But subject matter, territorial, impersonum. You walk in and you saw, and you argue. Instead of doing, in this case, you're standing there. You should have already filed an, an avoidance. In other words, in the statute, they may call it a set-aside. In another way, I tell you it's a collateral attack. You wouldn't be actually standing there if you know what's going on. But if a court has proper jurisdiction, if it has proper jurisdiction, here's a case that does not have to the authority to render a judgment, to provide the plaintiff with a remedy to issue legal issue or to hand down a sentence. For this reason, it is important for all parties involved to be sure that the case has been filed in a court of proper jurisdiction. You have don't have evidence of that here, folks, up front, to be able to understand a charge within the jurisdiction. And so this is a secondary fallback. You don't argue with anybody. The court's supposed to, in all, in all fairness, the court's supposed to be sitting in a neutral place. And they've set these presumptions up for a reason. And when you read the reasons, you, because of the, how, how underhanded things got with, uh, with defendants against justice, you kind of see why they had to do this. But that refined us to have to have the right say, getting to the narrow path as I conceived it. So you have to prove proper jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, at least subject matter, can be challenged at any time. Personum is killed as soon as you make a motion. I'll just put it in the most simple terms right now. It's not, nothing's exact, exact, but that's good enough for most people. When you, when you have the personum, that's agreed to be within a territory underneath the court's control. It never, it never touches whether the subject matter is, con, is done, and that's just assumed to be presumed upon you because you didn't rebut it. And so the rebuttal parts of this is, is critical to understand. Walking in and telling a judge to prove to you subject matter jurisdiction is not his job. It's not his duty. He's sitting there waiting for you to do the more proper thing. I don't, and in the video I saw, I don't agree with the, inter, uh, the interpretation of the video guy who would say he would have that judge's putty in his hands relative, instead of seeing the kid beat down, then bringing up the contempt of court as the reason why the, the kid got beat down. I don't agree with that because you have to be told the next thing you'd... Uh, contempt charge usually requires that you're told that your next action will be one of contempt. And then you better think real quick on how not to make the next action contempt. But you shouldn't be there, actually. I mean, this is the whole point. If you're doing it more, more correctly, that rarely happens. And, and so I'd be careful again what you hear... Yeah, be careful what you hear behind the woodshed. Go look and read very carefully. But I have never, ever tried to give you information that wouldn't something that you're going to need to know or be aware of in order to fulfill, um, fulfill in greater knowledge uh, when they come against you. And everything I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter about a court because I have a, any, a code enforcement is administrative. All these things I'm telling you, you just put them in an administrative context, they work there too. The subject matter of code enforcement over house codes is the subject matter. Do they have impersonum jurisdiction? Well, do they have the property owner that they can take? And that's a presumption against you, but do you make a quick record that it's not? And that usually takes care of the, that one usually takes care of the subject matter pretty quick. Is there a territory then? Absolutely not. You take care of that one. So if you understand what they're after, you understand how to respond, uh, you have a record that you've fulfilled the rebuttal. Now, the problem with the rebuttal is if they still leave a jurisdiction for them to decide, you have to be ready to counter that. But then we get on to the definition. We're still in the definition. And I'm talking all this stuff. Uh, the, there's a lot to think about, but it's not that complicated. I know I'm going through fast. I know it sounds complicated. When you lay this stuff out, you're always listening to qualify all this stuff. And you're really only looking to see what's in evidence. How did you get this information? What am I responding to? No, I don't understand the charges. Did I don't understand this jurisdiction? That sounds it's all it's making no sense to me what you're doing. I need to see evidence here. Where's the you talk to the judge? Where's the evidence in the record that you have any jurisdiction? 
Because I can't see it. I don't see it. Yeah, I might be stupid, but then I may be uh, untrained, but I'm not supposed to be trained. Um, you're not supposed to be interfering with me in my, in my lawful capacity. I have no problem with if someone had a, an unlawful capacity that I was doing uh, to answer to that, but I don't see any of that. Anyway, I'd be careful. I'd saying too much already here with you, but just to explain it. But I guess the point, I'm explaining it. So you have I know, subject matter, territorial, impersonal. You argue subject matter, and you and it's presumed that they have you person, the one that they now presume you are subject because you're there to argue this thing against a presumptively valid complaint in absence of your rebuttal, or you're proving that it's fraud. They have you, folks. The judge has jurisdiction. Why? Because they split these jurisdictions into more than just the word is one word. The jurisdiction may be five or six things. There's a, quite a few here, actually, but the ones you want to focus on are the ones we're talking about today. In the court system, there are three primary jurisdictions. I'm going to say it over and over because you have to understand there's three, not one. Subject matter, territorial, and impersonum. And you don't say, oh, I'm not a person. They are presumed to be underneath the subject matter liability and obligation when you don't overturn in the presumption. That's the problem. So you have to walk in with your innocence in the proper way to rebut. Yeah, I go beyond the rebuttal. I show it's a fraud. Now they can't even. Now they can't use it. But I don't. Not my opinion says that. The black and white and my proof of that, if you will, title is what we prove. Whether or not that comes in the title, the grant limitation by the Constitution, and all that's another title right. Okay, you bring all that forward as evidence. And you show inside the complaint that it's not exposing to the court. You actually treat the court as a victim. Well, I hope, hope you understood that one. Treat the court as a victim of, of improper statements. Not a silver bullet. You don't do it all the time. It depends on how the case. But anyway, this one, okay, so let's move on. Typically, a court holds more than one jurisdiction type in any case. This will mean the court can hear cases that originate in its juris, geogra geographical, geographical jurisdiction, and it has subject matter jurisdiction as well. And so you start seeing how they can split the hair to grab you up, and if you don't know that, they get you. If you allow them to continue jurisdiction, they're going to be moving the, changing the hat of jurisdiction w without you knowing it. An example of jurisdiction of family law court has authority to hear the decide matters related to a divorce. I won't go to child custody, all that. That's done through your marriage license instead of doing matrimony, but that's not even, that'll be a tax, so you have to understand all that. Let me get down to courts of general jurisdiction. Courts of general jurisdiction. General jurisdiction is really difficult because it sounds like they have everything. In fact, I don't know that I'm going to get to it, but there's a court case out that just came out uh, that uh, discussing what absolute immunity. You think absolute immunity is absolute. And yet you find out uh, in the court now, it gives us the term that we can use. Absolute immunity, it may be absolute, but it's not infinite. And this is where you find the anomalies to go after them and make records to stop what they would then claim uh, absolute immunity over, which is not infinite. In fact, now I would lead with it. They may have absolute immunity, but it's not infinite. Here's how they breach that, that qualified immunity. All right, so here's courts of general jurisdiction have authority to hear any type of case within its geographical or governmental jurisdiction except where provided by law. That's presume they have it. You have to show the law that accept, limits their authority. What did I just say? The statute that says the court has no jurisdiction to alter or modify a patent. That is provided by law. There's other laws. There's grant law. There's all kinds of other applications. You have to find it because this is a this is a place that was constructed as, as a plantation and your servitude presumed. That's why you only get the rights you assert properly. So if you ever thought you were not in an open air prison, this discussion today actually points that you well. It's, hopefully, it starts to clar clarify that for you uh, that unless you know your rights and you know how to defeat these things properly. Be ready for a beat down. I mean, be be happy you didn't get beat down. I suppose I don't like it. I'm not agreeing with it. I'm saying that's the the condition that we're in right now. No, we would. The courts are often called district courts or superior courts, depending on the state. In the state of New York, the state court of uh, general jurisdiction is called the Supreme Court, which is confusing because it's not actually a state Supreme Court. Like everything legal does, you can't really believe the rules. You got to go find out for sure, and you don't put impose what you think on it. You actually should ask. In an evidentiary state, what, where is the evidence of this? 
But they'll send, they may send you an answer. You're going to have to have to respond to it. That gives you the opportunity to show then that it's not correct, doesn't it? You get to a moment to rebut. And you have notice, opportunity, and time and place as due process to fulfill that, don't you? And when they truncate that, you have a complaint that said you didn't get that right, didn't you? So they show you they can beat you down, and they can take your rights, and you're just going to get the right of, of proper complaint afterward. And so that's that's if you just fall into the procedure side uh, where they have control and don't move into your remedy side. Uh, this means for in this discussion, this means for instance, the state trial court of general jurisdiction might have a pro authority to hear cases regarding a variety of subjects within its jurisdiction and criminal uh, governmental jurisdiction. But it says it might have authority. That's the do you have lawful jurisdiction? Where's the ev? You ask it this way. Where's the evidence of the subject matter? Where's the evidence of the personum jurisdiction? Where's the evidence of this and that? What what evidences do you have that I'm going to be responding to before I enter a plea? All right? No silver bullets, no shields. But you're making a record, don't you? I think if you're listening, I hope you're listening to me. You're hearing a little bit different record, I think, than you hear in lots of other places telling you stuff. And I'm thinking through, I'm not trying to exalt myself. I'm trying to be truthful about where you're going to find proper information. And I'm not telling you everything because I don't have the time to tell you everything. I'm, boy, I'm not, I'm not saying a whole lot more than's in my head that I'm telling you. That if actually talking about this is very difficult because it's just so much to actually know. But once you get it, it's really pretty simple. And like I've told you, you get it down to where you just, they're either going to do the thing the right way, that, that you can find black and white, not your opinion, completely, and you're doing it right, and you've known that, and at some point you've, you've learned how to test that. Like I said, you ask a question relative to a right you have, and you, you back that ignorance up against the ignorance they've caused against what you, a right you have. Now you have an ability to speak, and they can't get you for it. Uh, but until you work that out, you have really nothing to say. And you've got to be careful not to get frivolous on your requests. And so, uh, for instance, separate courts of judges will hear family court matters. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, determining whether the court has a jurisdiction. I can't remember. I can't highlight this, so I have to go through this. And, okay, in order to determine which court has jurisdiction over legal matters, certain questions must be addressed. Well, you need to get this list to start. Now, again, I'm just going to go off the legal dictionary to start here. Which court has jurisdiction in the geographic area? Uh, a civil lawsuit for an accident that occurred in Florida cannot generally be heard in California. Now, that's too broad for me. You can do that with your local court over a traffic ticket. What? What? Where's the evidence of, of the geographical area that this court has jurisdiction over? And don't even say more. Let them, they'll tell you. They'll, they'll produce the ticket and say it's right here because there's presumptions on the ticket. That's how you address, eventually address it. So I just go after addressing those things up front and not worry about all this. So it's for you to hear this, what's jurisdiction, and that they got a bunch of different types of jurisdiction they hold they use to beat you down with, that you're focusing on one side and that they use the others to beat you down with is my, 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 the sadness with which I come to tell you that you got to stop doing that to yourself. You may, be, may not be victorious in stopping a jurisdiction. But you've established a record of uh, that that wouldn't that would have been put in the uh, in the in the waste paper basket had you not made the record prior to making a plea. And this is a critical time. In fact, you can do everything all your all your avoidances of before a plea. Once you move and are required to plea, whether they did that right or wrong, all those can be reasserted later in a different form, but on the same purpose. And if you're not doing that, you're just letting them, you're just giving it to them. Okay, number two, which court has jurisdiction over the defendant? Well, if it's presumed by a traffic ticket you're the person liable to the motor vehicle code, that's the person, you, the one that's standing there that's going to answer to that violation. Otherwise, what are you doing standing there or not doing the remedy that says they don't have a right to do that? Number three, which court has jurisdiction over the subject matter? Right? Do you have geography, you have the defendant, and you have subject matter. If you walk in and argue, argue subject matter, you're going to lose. Just arguing, you're going to lose. If you're looking for the evidence, that's a little bit different, a different point. Just asking for the evidence of the subject matter relative to you. Now, that's the point. You're not a person yet. Not that question. It's not even a rebuttal of the presumption. It's a, literally, impliedly attacking the sufficiency of a complaint, isn't it? You could actually do that in avoidance to set aside. You say it's not not apparent to me what the what the uh, subject matter jurisdiction that there's evidence of subject matter jurisdiction over me. Now what am I doing? I'm saying that the presumption 
you don't put this in the paperwork. It's just something you're looking for. The presumption is that you're the person based on the the, the cop who never tells a lie on his certificate on his uh, on his affidavit that's supposed to be done in a penalty of perjury. They presume you in that you have what the application signed. If he's got a driver's license there and a number, that's pretty much a presumption, isn't it? So now you got to be careful because now you got to figure out. That, that, that you still ask the question when they come back. Well, it's because of this number that you have, or whatever they say. Then you come back and you now you look at go look at your UCC uh, signature. You want to get uh, the signature off the application that became the thing that brought you into the person liable, the person of jurisdiction underneath that court. Because you've done something again, like I said, you filled out an application. You can do that while you have a license in defense of yourself. Now, boy, I can't even get close to touching that today, but that's where you, I say you can have a, a driver's license. When you find out that they're improperly applying that license outside of what you intended, you can go back to the UCC with a rescission and go look at the rescission. I think there's five of them or seven, whatever. They Find the two or three that you can use because there's usually two or three. And you say, boy, this is not working. This is a fraud, non-full disclosure, unconscionable now, whatever. Whatever you're going to find for you. Uh, this is a mistake, even simple mistake, folks. Come on. How hard is all this stuff? Hey, well, so which which court has jurisdiction over the subject matter? That's lawful jurisdiction, the proper jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction is another heading. Subject matter jurisdiction is authority of the court to hear, hear the cases involved in subject certain subject matter. Certain subject matter. Is it the use of the roads or is it motor vehicle code? You don't tell them. You don't argue that it's not in there. You just say you haven't seen it. Now, they might produce something. So be careful on how imposing you think you are how arrogant they got tricks all over the place you got to really be laid back about what you're doing no silver bullets no shields these people are criminals you better admit to that not agree just admit that so you can start protecting yourself from it because when they come back with the wrong things you're going to have to identify how they came at you wrong in fact i use that now as instead of waiting through the appellate court process which i don't give up i continue the appellate process i actually do a collateral attack on that it's outside the scope of their jurisdiction to do actions like that and that interfered with the right you were trying to present that's a collateral attack as well to that system I'm talking lots here fast, I know. It sounds complicated. It's it's not because this is the uh, this is the plantation. You either live in the prison and you agree to this to be a slave or you figure out what you can do to curb or stop the harms. Not my rule, folks. The you, bankruptcy? Well, how do we know that? You use the FRN, you got yourself into some loans into their system. How hard is that to figure out your subject? Divorce? You you got a a license, a permission to do an illegal act, a license in the state. Civil rights violations. Underneath what? Uh, Title 42, 1981. You've agreed you're a free, um, fr freed man or woman that's been brought back into a federal jurisdiction and subject to exactions of every kind. Probate. Because you weren't smart enough to get rid of all your stuff before you died, the state gets the authority to tell, come in and take half and divvy it out to your, uh, to, your, uh, as a, uh, to your heirs and assigns or even your enemies, depending on who makes the claim. Because you didn't step up to do your thing. All right? What's available? You could have stayed out of it, but no, we don't do things so that, that for your benefit, for your heir's benefit, they've made a probate court. There is no probate when you got your no property, folks. Come on, let's figure it out. And yeah, that's legal. Yeah, you got to do some requirements, but those requirements are set up so they try to stop fraud. And when you start acting more properly, uh, in, then they, they have to go by your will. They talk at your will. Your will is 100%, folks, when it goes there. So why haven't you been exercising your will in every other thing until you got to where you weren't here no more? However free you may be then. Anyway, so let's go through a little bit more. The purpose of the dividing a court system into such a subject matter jurisdiction is to assure the judges hearing certain types of cases are experienced in the area of law as they work within it on a daily basis. It is just common sense that a judge specializing in bankruptcy cases not be allowed to hear a personal injury lawsuit. Now, why are you think that they can't touch patents? Because that's an area of law that nobody in the, in the no bar association is, is trained in. Even the mining law, you will not see a continuing education learning system about, pro, about mining law, let alone proper mining law. They're not supposed to, these legal systems, these judges, these bar association, the judicial department, the judicial branch of the government should not be touching these things. And yet they do, and that's why you see what's going on. But in bankruptcy, it takes you to be, have put your signature down on something, doesn't it? 
And then likely, when they came to ask you for the payment, you didn't go through your what the federal government also gives you as your your challenge, your ability to challenge if you have a challenge underneath the Effect Collections De- Debt Practices Act. It's all there. A lot of it's all here already, folks. Folks for for protection. We just don't exercise it. That's on us, not them. To walk in and argue, uh, have the judge prove a, a trier of fact sitting neutral neutral between the parties, not supposed to have nothing but looking to see what's what that's in the record. And you argue to him to prove he's to prove jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction. You're asking the wrong guy. The prosecutor's the one that's supposed to have provided that already. That you don't see it as a defense, and or at least in a a limitation on your ability to answer, isn't it? But no, we got to know so much and say so much and do so little. I mean, we know what's right. We know what's going on, and we don't have a clue. And for as much as I'm telling you I understand some of these things, there's things I'm careful not, not to look past because I don't really quite get some things. And so I think about what I don't understand, which isn't being told, which I've kind of worked out real hard to figure out what I should be, and then I go in and do what more, is more proper not to know something, but to put it in the context the absence of that knowledge to me causes an imposition on my ability to, to uh, a remedy under law. And now I've got myself in a position of vulnerability. I take my real ignorance and I put that into a, a real advantage. Uh, and again, you, can get the, you might get the right answer and still have to perform. But, but this is what this is all set up to be. It's when things go wrong. And the problem is the government came to be the first wrongdoer. And we, we uh, in all our uh, working together, supposedly helping each other, uh, we'll all go challenge subject matter jurisdiction. I may have even said the challenge subject matter jurisdiction, but my mind says it's done in a certain way. It's not done to a judge, it's done to the prosecutor. And you do it through the rules of evidence in a way, where's the evidence of this judge? Now you call it out to him that you can't find it. And it's not him to tell you either. The, the prosecutor has to step up. I don't know if you notice, folks. Look very carefully at all these things that you watch. Before you enter a plea, likely the prosecutor will say zero. Will say will interject zero unless it has to do with a potential claim against a, his his actual lawful use and a challenge to that that he might have done fraudulently. They will say nothing. Why? Because they're still negotiating, arranging your jurisdiction with that court. They have the personum, they presumptively have the personum, they presumptively have the territorial geograph- geographic. What they may not have is that uh, subject matter, but you're not, you're not properly challenging in any way of the proper parties. Some types of, of jurisdiction, t- jurisdiction, or lack thereof, can be waived by parties allowing the court to hear a case anyway. So anyway, there's a whole lot here to say. A whole lot to go through. You got to read through this. Get this link. Understand what jurisdiction is. Understand there's a whole lot uh, underneath it, and that there's a way to avoid it if it's avoidable. There's a way to challenge it in a remedy if it's challengeable. Where officials come under color only without title or the real or the right to title, those are the those are the extortions and coercions and conversions of the rights and property. But this is not an opinion. These are all fact-based or absence of evidence-based conditions that you would be more are more proper to not know and ask more where in the evidence and don't be stupid if there's an evidence there you better just answer to it but if you see that there's a, a fraud going on on the assertion of a status on the assertion of a place on the highway on the motor vehicle code that's a that's a fraud of if you're just using the roadway and not in commerce that's a fraud folks you, you don't I, you just say where where is the evidence that I was underneath the subject matter jurisdiction where was the evidence of the, my personum beyond presumption my personum if that given that jurisdiction appears to be fraudulently asserted to this court but it's about jurisdiction it's about properly challenging it and that is not a light, that's not, there's no book about that. You just have to start getting in, if you're going to be involved, you have to start understanding uh, the dynamic. And you're up, I, I can't view that they're not up anything other than a criminals, even though they're sitting there in a neutral party, and you just treat them as a, treat the criminal as a victim, the judge, and all of a sudden you start moving your evidentiary rights that you have, and you put the burden back on the prosecutor. You don't focus on the court. There was uh, obligations and duties of a complainant. Grimmer, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. All the things you do to keep us going on this. And the jewels at UCY, thank you there. And everybody else that's uh, sending out the, the message of this broadcast. Try to get people up to showing that you're not helpless and you really put it on yourself. And, and be careful of the information that you get out there. I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs or Nature Willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass. <laughs>